When the element all the way to the left in a compound is a nonmetal, we must use prefixes to specify the number of each element inside of the compound. The prefixes are mono for 1, di for 2, tri for 3, tetra for 4, penta for 5, and hexa for 6, and these prefixes can continue if you have more than 6 of a given element. In this case, when the nonmetal is to the left in your molecular formula, you will be dealing with a molecular compound, which means that it uses covalent bonds to hold the atoms together instead of ionic. Because we're not dealing with ionic bonds, the elements will not have the defined charge in there, and so it's difficult to predict what the relative ratios of the elements will be, and that is why we're using prefixes. If there's only one of the first element, the prefix mono is usually excluded from the name, and likewise, if the first element does not have a prefix in a name, it is assumed that there is only one of them in the molecular formula. The overall rules for nomenclature is you start with the prefix for the nonmetal, so how many of the nonmetal element is present in the molecular formula, then the full name of the nonmetal, then the prefix for the negative element, which is the one on the right, then the first syllable of the name of the negatively charged element, and then I'd. When we look at this first example, we have one boron, so we do not use the prefix mono, and then we have three fluorines, so fluorine will get a prefix of tri. So it's the name of the first element, boron, then the prefix for the element on the right-hand side, there's three of them, so it's tri, then the first syllable of the element on the right, which is fluorine, so the first syllable would be fluor, and then you get the ending i. So this would be boron trifluoride. Here we have nitrogen and oxygen. You start with the prefix for the element on the left. There's two nitrogens, so the prefix would be di. Then the full name of the element on the left, which is nitrogen. Then the prefix for the element on the right. So there's four oxygen, so you're gonna get tetra. Then the first syllable of the element on the right, which would be ox, and then you end with i. So this compound would be named dinitrogen tetraoxide. This last one, we have carbon and oxygen. The element on the left is carbon, and there's only one of them, so we do not put the prefix mono in there. The element on the right is oxygen. There's two of them, so it will get the prefix di. No prefix for the element on the left, then the full name of the element on the left, so it's carbon. Then the prefix for the element on the right, di and then the first syllable of the element of the right, so it's oxygen or ox, and then the ending ide. So this would be called carbon dioxide.